thing today is scratch and okay i'm gonna repeat yeah let's go ahead all right uh this morning we are going to discuss scratch and dent um this has been a very um heavy request from a lot of our existing customers new customers how do we handle scratch and dent um the functionality the way we have implemented is is going to help you in a couple of ways you have received a purchase from your manufacturer and then later on when you are checking it you discover that one of them is having a little scratch but you're still okay to keep it with you so then how do i make it as a scratch and dent skew the next is you have received uh, you made a sale customer is returning the product to you and then now uh, it's returned because of some damage you make a new skew out of that and then you create it as a scratch and dent the other option could be you just have inventory in your warehouse and over the period of time, it has gotten some scratch because of moving in the warehouse and you want to move that stock to scratch and dent and then sell it. Um, you could always sell the existing SKU by changing the price in LKS suite in whatever way you want to do it. But in this case, what we are trying to do is we are uh, creating a new SKU for that product also adding the images. So, you know, a same chair can be a little scratch dent or it has a more scratch. So there is a reason for its price to be different. At the same time, we are also going to manage the financials at the back. How is it going to affect your cost of goods of sales and everything else? So I am going to share my screen and you let me know when you can see it. Okay, I can see it. Perfect. Okay, so uh, most of you already know Althea Suite, so I don't have to uh, start from there. I will reset my screen to the normal size. Okay, so under our inventory, we have a little additional module, Scratch and Dance. This takes care of every SKU which is created in the system, which is a scratched or you created a new model. Okay, so. Let's take a simple example. I will start a fresh here as a product. So there is no history behind it. There is no stock here. So it's easy for us to understand. So I'm going to make a new chair. Let's call it as a as my demo chair. Maybe we can categorize it as a furniture. Then I'm going to list it as a sales price as 600. Well, that's a lot of money, $450. Okay, so I have a chair, uh, I have it in the category, I have its sales price, I do not have any purchase right now, I don't have stock, and I'm gonna create this chair. I'll go ahead and copy this queue, so it's easy for me to go to the next streams. Now, I have a chair in the system, I'm gonna make a purchase. So we'll go to a purchase order and then create a purchase, or I can just go ahead and straight away create a purchase in Althea Suite. So I will do that. I'm going to come here. I'll say the vendor name is Ashley. We're buying this chair. And we can say we are buying two units of these chairs and the cost to me is $200. So we are buying a chair for $200 each unit and we bought a two unit chair and then we create this. Now, once the purchase has been made and then once or the stock has been entered as a received stock, warehouse realizes that one of the chair when the box is opened has a scratch. So a couple of options. Let's go ahead and view this purchase. And then I'm going to say, create a scratch 10 document. I am okay to keep it. If you did not want to keep it, you would anyway do a sales a purchase return. So there's no need to go through this workflow. But now against a purchase, you are creating a scratch dent because maybe manufacturer gave you a credit note or maybe it's a small scratch. You can still sell it and you're still going to be profitable with that sale. So I will do this creature scratch and dent document. What this, the, what this document does is it opens that SKU. Original SKU is demo chair. That was the name of my chair. Quantity is two that I have received. And this is the warehouse where it is sitting. Item category is furniture, sales price, purchase price, cost of good, 
current stock. I want to make one of them as my scratch and dent unit, not both of them. It is also brought the purchase document number where I have purchased it. There's no need to connect this with any customer because this is a purchase related. The reason you see customer tab is because on the same screen, if there's a sales return, then you can uh, select from which customer this came back, what's the return document number and create that as a scratch and dent unit. Okay, move to warehouse. Where do you want to move this stock to? Right now, two of them are sitting in AS, Athia Suite Furniture Store. So I created a SND warehouse. So you can create a warehouse in the system where you want to keep these products separately. Athia Suite is generating a unique code for this product because this is a new product we are adding in the system. Category for new, on what category you want to at that, do you want to put it in the same category or a new category? So I selected, I created a category prior to this meeting as SND category. Scratch and dent expense account. Where do you want to expense it? So I have created a profit and loss type of account, which is my expense account, which handles that. Short description, uh, chair, like this group, scratched. What's the status? It's slightly scratched. I can add the images right now. I should not be zero. It's saying that you did not put the sales price for that uh, new item price. What's the price at which I want to sell it to? So I can see my actual sales price is 450. Maybe I want to sell this for $420. And then manage images. Over here, we can add some images. It will work on your phone, camera, iPad, whatever you have. So I have some downloaded images that I will. So I'm adding an image. You can add multiple images on the screen and I'm going to save and close this document. So we actually created a new SKU in the system. Demo chair uh, is the original one. The demo chair dash 0016, it's a document number scratch and dent. So let's go ahead and go to my products and see what all happened. Under scratch and dent, if I search for my demo chair, this is the scratch and dent uh, demo chair, which is in this category. But if I'm looking at all items, I have two chairs now. One is the demo chair that I created in the beginning. And one is this one that we just created. I had a stock of two units that I purchased, but since I moved one of them to a scratch unit, it moved that stock to this one. So stock also got managed. It got reduced from here and it came here. And uh, let's see what happened there. So we will go to stock transactions. If you see here, a stock has moved, one share is in and out. So we've also taken care of your stock transactions. You have moved a product, the stock of two quantity moved from one warehouse to the other warehouse. If it was the same warehouse, it's gonna sit there, but still there's gonna be a stock transaction because it's a new SKU that got created. Now this is, uh, this is your uh, SKU that you can sell. Uh, you can make an invoice for this product, uh, it's a different unit. Uh, you can, when you're making invoice, let's see how it comes up. Um, we'll add a customer. Um, you can at that time say, hey, I have a little bit of a scratched one. Would you like to take that? It's a different product. You have the images and everything. You, If you have a website, which is maybe not RWS or maybe some other platform, this could have pushed to the website also, hey, I'm selling some scratch and dent products. Um, and this is how it will work. Now, at this time, the COGS is not going to have a lot of problem because I'm still selling it at a price more than what I have purchased it for. My purchase price is $200, whereas my sales price is $450. So I'm still profitable here. Uh, there is not going to be any uh, scratch and dent financial transaction that is going to happen. But let's go ahead and take a scenario where now I am not going to do from a purchase, but I'm just going to move a product from, which is sitting in my inventory to a scratch and dent unit. 
So I will come here to scratch and dent. I'll do the same chair. I have one more in stock. So I will create a new scratch and dent document from warehouse, Akia Suite warehouse. Original warehouse that I'm moving is my demo chair. Current stock is showing me is one. I have one in stock and I want to say that I want to move it to my scratch and dent warehouse again. Uh, again, I will put the same category. I will put it at a different expense account. Now, if you see over here, it can show me when it was purchased. If I really want to link it to original purchase. This time, I did not come from purchase. I just randomly picked the product and I want to create a scratch and dent product for that. If you want to link it, it will show all the purchase documents where this chair has been purchased. And then you can link it uh, to which purchase it was if you are going to take the vendor credit note. Now, in this case, we are going to say that uh, item price is going to be $180. It's really scratched and damaged. I need to sell it lesser than the cost to me. So let's see what happens here. Same thing, add the description, uh, broken leg. Um, we can add more images like we saw earlier. Um, and then I'm going to save that. I did not put the quantity, okay? The quantity that I want to move, save that. At this time, if you all noticed, I am trying to, I created a new SKU and my SKU that I have created is priced at a price lesser than my cost to me. Let's see what happened on the financial transactions. It updated my uh, scratch and dent as $20. Um, my inventory asset is 180. My inventory asset account credit is 200. So it moved $20 as a loss here to my scratch and dent account. We will be able to help you set up this account at the back end where do you want to put your financials for your scratch and dent unit. But this is how it will. Uh, the, as soon as you create a scratch and dent for such type of item, it's going to update the cogs of that item as a loss. So this was a case of simple chair. You buy it or you're moving current stock and you're making it as a scratch and dent. And then you have a stock, you keep selling it whatever way. <clears throat> now let's take a case of a sales return. Um, I have made this invoice this morning. Uh, let's create a... And the same thing will work in the serial number also. If the product is serialized, then there's actually nothing happening. The product remains same. You're moving it to a scratch and then unit. It's going to move its serial number there. We'll see that also. But let's quickly do a sales return here. Uh, we are returning this mattress, maybe one quantity because there is something problem. Uh, I am receiving it back in Althea Suite uh, Furniture Store Warehouse. And I'm returning this money to customer as a cash. Now, if I go back to my, again, scratch and dent unit, I want to convert that to a scratch and dent different unit, that mattress that we just received back from customer. Let's go ahead and do the same exercise. I have it uh, in my AS store. I am sorry, I need to come back and copy the SKU of that mattress. So we'll take this SKU. Let's come back here. Create a new scratch and dent. We go here. This is my SKU. All right, so this is from a sales return that we are going to do it. Um, okay, we will do it from here. So over here, we can view the sales return. We could have done it right here. I didn't have to go there. And I can say, create a scratch and dent for that. I am receiving a return right there, create a sales return. Uh, into a scratch and dent unit. So create a sales return, scratch and dent unit. It's really damaged. I cannot sell it again in my normal, uh, same exercise. Where are you moving it? What's the price that you are going to sell it at? It already brought in the customer name who returned it against which invoice number and what is the return document. So there is a complete audit of that scratch and dent skew that you're creating. 
what is it, why it happened, from where it came. So you know the complete life cycle here. So we can move it to a, our scratch intent warehouse. Uh, and you can have as many categories. I just, I'm creating one category and adding it. And you can have as many different uh, scratch intent financial accounts also, if you want to account uh, furniture as a different, appliances in a different, you could create as many of those expense accounts. Um, this is slightly scratched. Uh, damaged mattress. So we add that here. Uh, now what's the price I want to sell it? My last purchase price, I did not even have a sales price earlier. So I will say that I want to still sell it at $200. The reason the price is zero here is because in the product definition, this product does not have a price. That's why you see it's zero here. If the item definition had a price, it'll come bring that price here. And actually we sold it without stock in my database. So that's why current stock is also negative, which is not gonna be there in your case, or it can very well be possible that you made a sale and you did not have stock. So we'll save that. Current stock item would not be, cannot be less than zero. It's telling you, even if I did a sales return, my stock was still negative because I really did not, I was just doing my demos and I did not have any stock. So let me just add some stock so we can. So anyway, if I have a stock, I can do this return. So I will just quickly do a stock correction and then we can do it from there. So this way also you all know how to do stock corrections in your system. I will go to the stock correction. This current system stock is showing three, we'll make it four. Now, if I go back to that sales return, we should be able to create that scratch and dent and convert the unit. So one thing important is when you are converting a unit to a scratch and dent, obviously it wants to know that, wants to have a stock there. Without a stock, you will not be able to do because we are doing a stock transfer there uh, at the same time. So we're gonna view that, uh, we can create a, Scratch and dent unit out of that. We already have all the details. I just quickly add all the fields. SND. Scratch and dent. Move it to this warehouse. I want to sell it at $100. It's really damaged. And then and I'm moving stock quantity from one. This is my thing. I just want to make sure I don't get any saver. Okay, so we made a new queue for that mattress and removed it from that warehouse. And now we can sell it as a scratch and dent. So if you come here under your products, under your items, if you have just a single category for your scratch and dent, all whatever I've been creating is all sitting here. Each of them has its own SKU. And then if you look at whenever I'm adding the images, uh, it is all getting updated when you're creating the product. Um, the image is updated. The description that I wrote at the time of creating the Scratch and Dent document is updated. If you added 10 images, that's gonna get updated. Um, the sales price that I'm thinking about selling it is gonna get updated. The cost is going to be my actual purchase price of that product. That doesn't change when we do this change here. Okay, so now let's take a look at something with the serial number. It's going to be the same process, but I will do it very quickly. Um, I will add a new SKU here as a air conditioner. As a lot of our clients are managing serial numbers, I will say that my product has serial number. Then we will put it in a category as air conditioner. And then I'm just gonna give it a sales price as $600 and then create that. Let me make a purchase quickly. I'll go to my purchase section. We'll buy that unit. Now we'll buy it from GE as it is an air conditioner. I'm gonna buy two of these units at 
And then as soon as I'm creating it, it's saying generate the serial numbers. My loop, uh, my QLN is, my serial is already generated. So we are good here. And I'm gonna create this. Now we have made a purchase just now. And then over here, if I view that purchase, I can see that I bought two of these. Nothing is gonna change major. All you're doing is if you're defining this as your scratch and dent unit, it's gonna show the serial number of that unit. Um, you're selecting two of them. It's gonna ask you to pick the serial number. Which serial you are gonna to move to your scratch and dent. This is very important because there is no stock transfer should happen of a serialized product without the serial number. Otherwise we have a mismatch. Rest of the product uh, poll history remains the same. You add uh, the price, you connect with the invoice, uh, or you do a purchase return, everything is same. So we will um, finish this up. We will move it to our scratch and end. Or I could have uh, just made another warehouse for my serialized product. Since my original price is 600, I maybe I'm gonna sell it at $400. Okay, damaged. damaged. And put your images. Uh, everything is fine. So now we have a new air conditioner. But in this case, what is important to see is that when we see the stock transfer, the stock has moved. Uh, oh, sorry, stock transactions. The stock has moved uh, to that S and D warehouse and it will move the serial number also to that warehouse. We can take a quick look of that. Uh, we can go to my serial number manager. It is my serial number manager. And we will see that stock is sitting. If you see here, I have one serial moved it's showing here that this item is moved to SND warehouse. The serial number has also moved to another warehouse. Same process can also happen if you're doing the exchange. Um, now exchange in Althea Suite, we have, if it's a, a product which is a furniture, you could do an exchange. And right at that time, when you're bringing back your old uh, uh, product, which is getting sent back to you, you can convert that to a scratch and dent unit. So when I'm creating that scratch and dent document in our um, over here, uh, you will see there is, just pick anything. There is an option of exchange with. This is the process that happens at the time of invoicing. You are doing an exchange and right there, you will get that option, exchange it with, uh, create a new scratch and dent unit of this and give customer a new product. So the same process, I, everything same, but it just simplifies your workflow. I understand that a lot of you have a lot of items sitting in Scratch and Dent. This module will help you manage all of them, move them to a different warehouse, price each of them. If you want, you can create a barcode sticker printer for each of these Scratch and Dent units because we are creating a new SKU. It will nicely show the item name, um, description or a short description, like why this price is uh, $400 and why this scratch and unit is $300. Uh, you can display all that. You can also display the manufacturer name and try to sell your products, which are just scratched little here and there and clean up your warehouse. So this is all I wanted to show today. I have five more minutes in this meeting. If anybody has any questions or anything else you want me to show, I will be happy to do that. No questions for us. Cameron, do you have a question? No, no, it all looks really awesome. This is great. Okay, It's simple, but uh, the complexity is a whole lot because it touches all the documents. Uh, it's not just like go ahead and um, uh, um, create a this, scratch and then, yeah. Yeah, it, but, Tana, this is a new um, module. So if you wanted to add it into your account, you can email us and we could talk about how that looks for you in your live account. This is something we have recently added it, yes. 
Right. So what I'm saying is that uh, we would love to record. Yes. So the recordings are going to be, uh, there's a link within that chat. I put it in the beginning. Those are going to be at that link every single week. Great. Uh, what I was trying to say is that uh, the functionality is made in depth. That's why it took us time. Um, not just create a scratch and then, but it's touching almost every module, sales, sales invoice, purchase, returns, exchanges. Everywhere, we're giving you option to quickly create a scratch and then this queue. And yes, uh, as soon as it is released, uh, we will uh, reach out uh, if you want to get that in your account. What if you purchase a container of resin tape? If you have purchased a container of SND appliances, they are already scratch and dent appliances. That's how you're purchasing. You don't have to do this process, Mandy. This is for inventory sitting in your warehouse, which you purchased it as a regular price, a correct inventory. And over the period of time, something has happened. That's when you will use this process. It could be maybe um, scratched because of delivery or just a warehouse damage or sales return uh, by a customer who knows what happened, um, something of that sort. This is when that will be used. Yeah. A other case, each SKU, but I don't know how your container is coming. Is that a same SKU or they are different? Maybe we can talk about it offline. We'll, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one with you and discuss this scenario. Um, and, so it looks like we are good. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Um, just to reiterate, those recordings are going to be always at that link that I put in the chat every week. If you have any other questions or concerns that you need a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, please feel free to reach out to our contact email. But otherwise, um, if anybody has any more questions, you can ask now. But I think we are going to end this meeting as of today. Thank you, perfect. Andrea. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You, thank you. Yes. We'll see you again next Thursday. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.